In Power Query, we want to see how to do exact match lookup and approximate match lookup. This is the sales table, and based on the product name, I need to go over, like I had VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP, look up the product name, bring back the price. Then I need to use the units column doing approximate match lookup to get the correct discount and bring it back to the sales table. Now, I've already done a video on both exact match and approximate match lookup. And just a couple days ago, Minda and Phil did a video also. And so we want to look at two formulas for exact match lookup and for approximate match lookup. And the cool thing is, we'll see how the formula for exact match looks up the column, then the record. And then we'll do it looking up the record and then the column. And then for approximate match lookup, we'll see how to use a custom function variable and a let expression variable. And these two formulas will first select the rows and then the column. And this one will select the column and then the row. So we'll see how to create these. And then I want to hear in the comments below, which one do you prefer and why? Now, doing lookup in Power Query is not as easy as it is in the Excel worksheet. For example, Power Query has no XLOOKUP or VLOOKUP equivalent. It can do two-way lookup, sort of like the index function, because the index function needs a row number and a column number. In Power Query, the basic two-way lookup formula is, please give me the table name. And then in curly brackets, which serve as the positional index operator, please give me the row number. Then in square brackets, the field access operator, please give me the column name. Now there's some variations on this, as we will see. But that's the basic way to do two-way lookup in Power Query. Now here we are in the Power Query editor. And in this sales table, we need to look up, based on the product in each row, the price. And in this first formula, we're going to look up the row first, and then we'll get the column. That will give us the intersecting value. So in F sales, we go to Add Column, Custom Column. We'll name this Price. And we'll start off by just getting the table, D Product. If I click OK, that means I have the full table in each row. Now, because we have a unique list of product names, if we come back to the dialog box, I'm going to click the gear icon, we can use the positional index operator, curly bracket. And inside, we need the correct row position for the price we're trying to look up. And Power Query is base 0. So if I put a 0 and click OK, I'm looking up the first record. But I want it to be dynamic. Now inside the positional index operator, those curly brackets, when we use square brackets, it's not a field access operator to look up a column from a table. It's a lookup operator. And it allows us to look up a field from that table without using the square brackets. So we'll type product. And we run a Boolean test. Hey, are any of you equal to? And remember, that's a unique list. And now we use the field access operators. And in fact, we can just come over here and double click this. And that allows us to access the product in each row. This is called a key match lookup, because that product column contains a unique list, a primary key, that allows us to check each one of these products against this unique list. So now inside the curly brackets, we have a dynamic way to look up the correct row position to return the record from that D product table. So when I click OK, now I get a dynamic record quad when there's a quad and Carlota when there's a Carlota. Now we need to get at the price column to get the price. So we'll open up the dialog box. And after the equal sign, we'll use the record.field function. Open parentheses. It needs a record. And then notice it's field as text. So we type a comma. And in double quotes, we type the name of the column. That's what we're trying to look up. Close parentheses. And that's our formula that first looks up the row and then the column. When I click OK, we get the correct price for each row. Now let's add a data type. Up here, table.addColumn, there's a fourth argument. So at the end, we type comma, 
type for data type, and then number for decimal number data type. I'm going to click very carefully at the end and Enter. And now we have our exact match price lookup. Now we'll do exact match a second time. So we'll add a new custom column. We'll call it price 2. And then this one will look up the column first. So we'll do D product and then our field access operator. And we're trying to look up price. So tab, that will return a list of all the prices, the same exact prices in every row. Now, based on whatever the product name is, I need to pull out the correct row. So we'll edit. We'll use our positional index operator. And inside, we're going to use a function called list.positionof. And when I open parentheses, it needs a list. And we need to match the product here, row by row, with the full product column from D product. So we type D product, tab, field access operator, product. And that's our first argument, comma. And now we can just double click product and then close off list.positionof. And that formula, looking up the column, then getting the row position number, will do our two way lookup. When I click OK, there's the price. Up in the formula bar, in the last argument of table.addColumn, type.number. You know, in here, if I hit Enter, it puts that in. IntelliSense doesn't always work in Power Query. So I click at the end and hit Enter. So we did exact match lookup, looking up the record and then the column. Here we looked up the column and then the record. Now when we did exact match lookup, we used table.addColumn. And it used the keyword each, which is shorthand for a custom function, which iterates down each row in this table. When we do approximate match, we're going to use table.addColumn and each. But then internally, the function we're going to use after the each keyword is going to have to iterate down this column. So we're going to have a second occurrence of the each keyword. And in order to do that, we have to define a variable. So we're going to see two different ways to do this. We'll see how to do it with a custom function. And we'll see how to do it with a let expression. Now the essence of each one of the approximate match formulas to look up the discount is going to be the same. For each row, we have to take that value, 160, go over, compare it by asking how many of you are less than or equal to that 160. That would give us all rows. And then, of course, whatever the last one is, the one we want. If we're looking up 10, the answer to the question, how many of you are less than or equal to 10, is just the first row. So then the discount would be 0. All right, let's try over in F Sales. We'll try the custom function first. We're going to add a custom column. We'll call this discount. And we start with the whole table, the discount table. And if I click OK. That just gives me the same exact table. Now I need to filter the whole table based on this field here. So we'll edit. After the equal sign, we'll use table.selectRows, open parentheses. Table is the first argument, comma. The second argument requires a function. That's the formula that will iterate down D discount. And because we're going to have to access fields inside the D discount table and the units column, we're going to have to define a variable in a custom function. Open parentheses. And the variable we're going to define for the fields in this table is it. The each keyword will still work for table.addColumns to get to the units field out here. But now we have what we want, the variable to access the fields in D discount, followed by the go to operator equal sign greater than. And whatever comes after this is the formula that's allowed to use that variable. Now I want to access units inside this table here. So we preface it with it. And then we ask the question, hey, column, are you less than or equal to the available columns here? And double click units. Now this is the comparative operator, less than or equal to. That's just the syntax that Microsoft chose to say everything after this variable is our custom function or our formula. When I close parentheses, whoops, there's an extra square bracket. 
But that formula will give us a filtered table. When I click OK, the top table should have all the rows. 57 should have 3, and 10 should have 1. Now we need to get the discount column, so we edit. Table.SelectRows is delivering a table. And how do we look up a column and return it as a list? Field access operator. And then discount, close square bracket. Now when I click OK, we have a list. Oh, there it is, 4. For 57, there should be 3. And for 10, there should be 1. Now we always want the last item. So when we edit, after the equal sign, hey, that's a list. So we say list.last, and then close parentheses. And when we click OK, there we have looked up the discount, table.add column, at the end, comma, type number. So with this approximate match lookup formula, we looked up the row or the record first, and then we looked up the column and took the last item in that column. In addition, in this formula, we dealt with the fact that we had to work with two different columns from two different tables by defining a variable in a custom function. Now let's see how to do that using the let expression. Now this will be our fourth custom column that we create. We'll call it discount2. And we're still going to need to get the units from each row and ask the question of the units column from D discount which ones are less than or equal to whatever the unit value for each row is. Now we're going to bring in units into our formula using the let expression. So all lowercase let and let allows us to define variables and then say what output we want. So I'm going to name the variable u for units. And we say equals. And since this formula is going to iterate down this units, I can simply double click. There's the field access operator to get the value in each row. Now, normally in let, we have lots of steps, but we're only going to define one variable. Then we use in. Everything after in is what we want the let expression to deliver. So I need to filter the D discount units. D discount, that's the whole table. And I'm going to use field access operator to get units. Once we put a field access operator on a table, it's delivered as a list. So to filter or select a certain number of rows, we use list.select, open parentheses. The first argument needs that list. And there it is, function. Now, because we defined u, this input from each row here, as a variable, we do not need to define a function variable here. We can just use the keyword each, which is a stand-in for a custom function. And since we want to access each row in this list, when you use each, all you have to do is use underscore. Now, this is a list, so that says, please get each item in the list. If each and underscore are working on a table, then it gets the full record. Now, for each item in that list, I say, hey, which ones are less than or equal to the variable u, which is each units from this column. Close parentheses on list.select. And I forgot a comma to separate the first argument, which is our list, and then the custom function. So that will work. When I click OK, now I get a filtered list. Now what we're doing here, there's the 0 for 10 and the three rows for the 57, is now that we have this three rows, we want to count how many rows there are and then subtract 1 to tell us the position of the last one. Now we want to edit this. And let is what is delivering the list. So before let, hey, we need to count how many rows are in that list. So it's list.count. But this will count all the rows starting at 1. And Power Query is base 0, so we subtract 1. And now when I click OK, all I get is the position of the correct discount in that table over there. So we edit. And after the equal sign, there's the discount table. But we want to look up using field access operator the correct discount. And then from that list, we use our positional index operator. And this cool formula I learned 
from Phil and Minda in their video posted a few days ago. When we click OK, bam, there it is. We'll add to the last argument of table.add column, type number, and enter. So in this approximate match lookup formula, we looked up the column first, and then we got the row. And because we used two different columns from two different tables in our formula, we use the let expression to define a variable. And then in this approximate match formula, we looked up the rows first and then the column. And because we used two different fields from two different tables, we had to use a variable, and we used a custom function. Now I want to hear from you in the comments. For exact match lookup, do you like to look up the rows, then the column using record.field? Or do you like to look up the column, then the row using list.position of? For approximate match, do you like looking up the rows and then the column and using a custom function? Or for this one, do you like to look up the column, then the row using a let expression? Or maybe you have some formula you like even better. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video. Thank <laughs> you.